playing Hitler Turns East. It's by uh, Ted Rossio. And he uh, is one of four game designers that uh, put a game into to the Against the Odds 2010 annual, uh, exploring the, the Eastern Front in general. And this title I, I chose because it had some more positive reviews than some of the other ones. The other ones are interesting and all that sort of good stuff, but it didn't fit the needs for my chronological exploration, and it seemed to have the best... Uh, the best reviews of the four games there. And we'll get to the other four, three games at some point. This game is uh, run on a monthly turns, and it is uh, uh, uses a chip pull mechanic. You can see that there. See how that says assault there? Right. And they have assault and blitz. And the Russians have things like hold. Uh, there's a mistake on these counters. It's supposed to say something else. Uh, besides attack and then withdraw and there's another one that says counterattack. Okay, so you buy these you buy these with uh, command points that you roll for and depending on the weather and the, the time of year I think I know that doesn't factor in but you know the weather uh, it's going to impact how many command points you have and of course a uh, uh, blitz Costs more than an assault, and a hold costs more, uh, costs less than an assault. That type of stuff. So, uh, you you choose these. You never really have enough to do what you want to do, and you've got these fronts, these lines on the map, that define the operating areas of the units that are in them and their their activities for the given activation. So it's kind of a, a nice mechanic. You can move in and out of the fronts freely, but uh, but you can't just uh, but you can't just move all of your units in the turn. So you've got these groups of formations, and you've got some leadership impact, and you've got to capture cities to win the game. Where it is interesting, uh, and I had some trouble with this is my third or fourth uh, start on the game, is some of the uh, rules are very straightforward, but there are some interesting little mechanics in here that uh, are a little bit different in sequence than I'm used to. And there's this concept of line of communications and supply. And you check line of communications and supply at various points in the turn. And then at the end phase is when you start doing uh, some uh, reductions for being out of supply. So I was playing this, and uh, you know, one time the Germans went uh, got way too far, way too quickly, and I realized I'd done supply incorrectly. And then another time I played, and uh, the Russians were doing way too well uh, in the first turn. So <clears throat> it, it took a little bit of messing around with uh, and rereading of the rules to uh, get this done uh, or, be, or to get this to feel correct in terms of a uh, relatively historically accurate, based on what I know anyway, of, of, the, uh, of the game. So we're just about to start, uh, I think this is turn three actually. Uh, so we're heading into the August turn, and uh, yeah, it is turn three because uh, the second turn reinforcements have come on. Really interesting little game. It is uh, compact. It has very few pieces. It has. It's trying to capture some of the uniqueness of the Eastern Front in uh, in a very small package, and I, and I kind of like that. I think the command point chit pull mechanic could have put together here is really kind of cool because it, it really limits both sides and there's an interesting mechanic for the first four turns uh, rule I should say not mechanic I guess uh, these counter attacks y you pull these out and then you roll to see which front you're going to have to counter attack on and then all the Soviet forces have to advance and attack uh, and there's a special table for them to attack on, and it's always bad for them. <laughs> so uh, you may get lucky, as we did down here, and knock off a step uh, of the uh, of the allies. Now, of course, there are Stukas in it, which add some air power, and uh, it, they're typically the armies are four-step units, and the Panzer armies are just uh, two-step units. There are very modest replacements for both sides, and interestingly enough, the more victory points you acquire, the more reinforcements up to a maximum of four, sorry, replacements up to a maximum of four 
four units, not steps, you receive each turn. So you'll you'll go along this little turn track here, and it'll have the the number of replacements you should get. So see, there's two four there, and it goes along. Uh, but the more victory hexes I capture, that the you add that to the total, uh, and that will drive the the number of replacements that you're allowed to receive. And that maximum changes over time as well. That goes up and down. All right, so uh, I just thought to share that with you. Uh, we're kind of using this as our, here's another title in the chronological walk through World War II. We've done L2's, the Russian campaign. We'll do this and we'll do Blitzkrieg 941 from Command Magazine number one. And that will uh, wrap us up and get us through how far we get into this game. Uh, it'll get us through the kind of big strategic level game playing of the Eastern Front. And we'll work on things from there. We'll talk to you soon.